Welcome to my world. I'm Patricia Rose. I've been sculpting in polymer clay for over 18 years at this point, and this is my volume one how to sculpt in polymer clay introduction in a series of DVDs that I will offer to the beginning all the way to an advanced level student. Here's a small collection of some of the pieces that I have done over the course of the last two years. The basis to any good sculpt is knowing the um, proportion and the anatomy. Um, so what I've done is I've actually made drawings for you to follow and that will be included with each one of the DVDs um, on this particular model and she is a six inch fairy and I've outlined um, like a pattern for you to go by so that you can hold your doll up against it and see the actual proportion that she's supposed to be, size of head, all the way down to her feet. So <clears throat> you just take this pattern and we're gonna make an armature up against it. Remember I said she was six inches. So start with the clay. This is called a rib. This tool is a um, stainless steel, flexible, um, cutting clay tool. They use it in pottery a lot, but we're going to use it for our particular clay, and we're using ProSculpt clay here. You cut straight down. It's best to hold it with both hands so that you don't cut yourself because you can cut yourself. This is a pretty dangerous little piece of metal. Okay, you cut off small pieces like this, and then you're going to take it, and you're going to work it up in your hands. It takes a while to knead it. Sometimes I roll it between my um, hands and it just makes it easier, softer, faster, like a little worm. So here's a big worm. <laughs> um, got a lot of it worked up because she's a pretty large doll. You know, we work with four to five inches dollhouse size sometimes. And, um, but this is a six inch one, so it's easier for your beginners to handle. This is a Pro Sculpt clay. Um, I have one out now. Um, made by the same manufacturer that has my fairy on the front and my picture on the back and it's called uh, ProSculpt Light. I'm using a medium clay for this particular operation, this particular doll rather, um, but I really prefer the light for fairies and mermaid fantasy figures, so you should get some of that. It's on my website if you'd like to order it and um, I often mix this particular clay with different things like Fimo to get different colors. Fimo is really strong. In addition to knowing the anatomy and having a little plan to go by, your um, best thing to do is make sure that you have the proper size armature in it so that you will not be outside of the parameter of your outline of your doll. So if you get the right size armature and the right size wire to start, then um, you're going to have a lot easier job at it. First thing we do is I use 22 gauge for this size doll wire and I stretch it out and it's going to have a loop at the top of her head so we're going to go up one side down the other side with the same piece of wire and then we're going to cut it off so it might go a little bit past her feet but that's all right just as long as you um, make enough <clears throat> to continue the length of the doll Here's the arm. You can use the same wire, 22 gauge with this as well. Uh, if you want uh, a more posable arm, use 24. And so what you do is you hold it up against where the heart would be. Make sure there's a little bit sticking above, the loop is above her head. And put it right where the heart would be. And then we're going to take one of the legs, flip it over the top of where the arm shoulder would be and pull it back down, whoops, get a little loose there, and then do the other side, just flip it over, and it kind of locks it in, all right, straighten it out a little bit, 
Now we're going to twist it over and make basically a heart shape. And we're going to twist it down somewhat, but not all the way down yet. Okay, make sure it goes there. Put it on the center picture. It's easier to go by. Now we're going to twist the top part. It doesn't matter which way you twist, just as long as you twist it tight so that it doesn't move around inside the center of the head. And leave a loop at the top. So that's going to actually be used later to hang the doll in the interior of your oven if you're going to have a standing doll. And so we're going to make a little shoulder bin that will be down the center of her arm. Now if you don't put that little edge where the shoulder is twisted, you're going to end up with the wire down in the armpit and you don't want that. So keep it straight across there. And we're going to twist the center of this. Go down a little further, probably about to her navel. Somewhere in that range, yeah. And then you're going to start making a little hip joint. Okay, and turn it just a little bit. Now it's not straight out the side like the arms are. It's a little angle, just like your, bo your bones were inside of your body. And sometimes that slips around. Oftentimes a little heart area, you might want to twist it around a little bit more or um, put a little piece of clay over it right away to keep it from moving around. Okay, now hold it up, make sure everything fits. First thing you want to do with your softened ProSculpt clay, or a mixture of clays, is to put it on the torso. After you've got your armature done, make sure that your hands are clean. Try not to touch the wire any more than you have to, because that is how you make the clay exceptionally dirty. So, just build it up. And this building process takes a while. So we are, for time's sake, we are going to build a little bit and then I'm going to move on and hold it up to the, the drawing of the doll so that you can see where I'm going with it and try to stay in the outlines, but then we're going to move on because this is um, a little over two hour tape and we have to cram in a lot because there's going to be a lot of parts that we didn't cover in the last tape. Legs, feet, wings, a little more detail on the face. Whatever you gotta do, get it on there. Sometimes I do a little snake action here and build it up. The whole thing, just keep holding it up so that you get it on there the way it's supposed to be in the outline. And you wanna get about down to the wrist in each one of them and all the way down to the ankle, all right? And that's all you have to do at this point. Stay in the lines, turn it sideways, turn it around the back, give a little dip in the um, little bottom right here. And the little bottom is supposed to be lower than the front line right here. There's an angle from the front of her to where the back is, where she sits. A little dip right in here, the curve of her leg, a little dip right in here. And what we'll do is you've add a lot of clay to this armature. And the best thing to do is add a little bit more than you think it's going to need, but stay in this param this area from top to bottom. And what we'll do is we'll trim off with a knife. We'll carve down into the doll. That is the easiest way to eliminate moonies. So um, what I've done is I built this thigh up the way I wanted, and I just want to show you a few pointers um, on the body. And I'm going to finish this off camera so we can save time. But these these are important things build up a leg, make sure that it matches this with your little kneecap in the right location and see there's like a paddle for a foot, that's not much so what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish it out and it doesn't have to be pretty now because we're going to make it that way later, look at the big gaping incision on her make those calf muscles too big okay and at the end of the wire you just turn up the foot and there is a cut out right in this area okay and it's flat 
across here. It's high on the side. If you notice it's kind of built up here, but then you turn it sort of sideways, you're going to see that it, it goes down into the groin area. And what I'm going to do for any body, body um, limb that comes off of the main trunk, legs, whatever, it has a depression like so. And all of these depressions go out away from the torso. And this one goes up and out. And the same thing for the back side. You go up and out. Doesn't look like much now, but all you have to do is make it a little deeper and feather it out into the torso and push down on the top of that. It's starting to look like what it's supposed to. Okay, that's one. That's two. Uh, on the top, right here, uh, we had this in the first video as well. There's a muscle that comes across the top of the uh, um, shoulder blade, and it's attached right here, and it's attached right here. We won't go into this much because we've got the head and the neck and everything to do, but I want to make sure that you know that there's a shoulder blade there. I mean, not a shoulder blade, but a um, shoulder. And to build up to take some depth out of this area right here and build up towards the center where the chest is going to be. Okay, and see this kind of hangs down low. What you're going to do here is you're going to take it up, push it in like so. And this will be feathered in it more. It'll go out, but it's just a little deep place. And then there's an actual muscle, a bone, and everything that comes across here and goes up to the top where the elbow would be underneath this part. This is where the bend of the arm goes. I'm over-exaggerating to emphasize where it is, but that is that. Take your elbow, come down. We'll go over this later when I got a little further along on this um, this actual sculpt. I can't do it all on camera, so I'm just doing what I can do as fast as I can do it. Okay, tapers right here. And we're just going to leave a paddle for a hand at this point. Okay, on the, uh, go down a little bit to the knee area. It, it goes in, dips, dips in, comes back out dips in again. There's a little more carved off the top, right above the top of the knee. You can see that. Okay, And then it, it comes back out again. Then it goes back in again. I'm just pointing them out. We won't... Um, later on I'll deal with all the terminology for you in more advanced videos. If you want to really get down into it, we will do that. But I'm just going to give you the surface highs and lows. Okay. And if you look straight at the leg, there's a dip here on this side, but the dip on this side is down lower. There's a bulge here. It's up higher on the leg. And a bulge on this side, but it's down lower from the other side of the leg. Okay. And then there's a bone that's real close to the surface of the front of the leg. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take in. I am actually going to cut it flat. It looks like a severe case of cutting here, but it will work out. And you want to blend that back into it on that side. But you want to leave it fairly sharp on the surface of it right here. Okay, we're going to come back and fix our little foot later. When we get into more on the foot. <clears throat> okay, on the other side, um, just where the knee is, this, there's a dip right here to bring your knee down. It comes in some here and out this way. And our knee is more towards the center of the body. It's not dead center in the leg or over to, the, to this side, but it's over towards the center of the body. See what I just did? Okay, and you're going to do 
little tiny things um, later on in, in my more advanced videos. I'm going to uh, tell you about all the little bones and um, where all the little dips are. And we're going to get real into it. But I'm going to give you a cute little fairy with as little effort and as simplistic as I can make it for beginners in this film. Okay, and it's rough, but basically that is a leg. And on the arm up here, you've got a dip that comes down here. Right, remove the clay. And she's getting a little fat from um, this point. See, I haven't carved anything off of it at this point. And you can tell, base it on your photo, I mean your um, pattern, because that is an accurate rendition of how thick she should be. Okay. And once again, you're going to go back and you're going to put that little line in that gave it that realism. It brings it over to the other side of the arm. Okay. This part right here under the elbow, it's dipped in under. The little elbow hangs down below it. And the bone is from, from this point goes back and you're going to see it hang down low and towards the front more. If you can see that. It's sloppy, but you know, that's what you spend hours cleaning it up for. You just sit there. And maybe I have. Whoa wee. Okay. And uh, you're going to see little things like um, maybe this is has old lady arms hanging down, you know, that little flab that they get a little older. So we'll eliminate some of that. Okay, and there is a bin line, and it's going to be on um, the patterns. It comes just above the groin area, so if you divide the top of her head to the very bottom of her feet, there's a bin line that comes across here. Uh, this is very, very important, and that's where this little dip is in the center right here with the torso and the legs. So I want to go ahead and clean up all I possibly can, detail it as po best I possibly can, then put her in a pose, then fire her, then go back and put her hands on. Uh, we'll spend a little time on the foot now. If you look straight on, at the ankle area. You're going to notice, and you probably never did it before, um, that the inside ankle is higher than the outside ankle. Now mine don't have it yet, but they're about to. So you want to take a tiny little ball of clay. Sometimes you have enough clay you can work it around, you can move it around, so you've got it there. But not always. A little ball of clay up high and work it in. Okay, there is a dip on the back side of the ankle, just above the heel. Let's say this is your heel area. We're going to make a line. Okay, you see that? And then we're going to put a dent on each side and turn the foot over on the bottom. And you're going to see that, with any luck, that the heel is far more narrow than this part right here. It's really kind of skinny. You've got your inset here. Now I'm going to actually have a little pattern on the drawing that I provide you with when, you, when you've bought this video. And what it does is it goes in deep like this. And then you've got about, if you divide it from the heel to the, the front of the foot in half, okay, let's say that's the half mark, then basically from here to here, if you've got another half mark, that's where the toe stems come to and the little pad on the bottom of the foot. This is all going to be in the toe area, okay? So 
this is a pad. This is a high place, just like a little circle, all this round here. Okay, and there's a depression in the center. Um, sometimes I'll actually not put the feet on the actual doll until I've finished them on my surface, on my table, and then I put them on. That way I make sure that they match up and they're exactly the same size. See, this one's a little thicker, so all I have to do is squeeze it out and make it the same width at the front. Okay, and it's, it's just easier to do it flat on the surface, and I start with the bottom of the foot generally. You can map it all off. I'm going to turn it up so I can see what I'm doing because I'm upside down for the camera here and sort of sideways. It's harder to sculpt this way. Okay, so what you do on the bottom of the toes, of course your big toe is always going to be sticking out further than this and they taper down like so. You want to divide from this place to this place in three equal sections. Okay. That's roughly equal. Then cut the other half, the second one, in two, and this one in two. And voila, let's hope for you got five toes. Alright. I want to take a little bit out. There's a tool that I have that would do this probably better, but I don't have it handy. Uh, it's a ribbon uh, wire tool and it's on my website um, information and it'll be on the end of this tape too. Okay, This will work for now. It'll at least get me in the right um, area so you can see what I'm doing. Alright, it is an arch and the little toe is far lower than where I've got it. <laughs> okay these off a little bit more of an angle. Okay. I didn't get rid of it. Then bend them down just a little bit. And you want to actually cut all the way through to the front because if you don't they're not going to line up. So if you had this on the surface of the table then it makes it so much easier. Now I'll do the hands on the surface of the table. We'll do hands one more time on this video as well. Okay, so you know where you're going with this. Go all the way through. Pull them out just a little bit. Now, here's a cool trick. This one's going to come down more towards the center. She's been wearing tight shoes. Okay, and this one has a small bit of toe stem showing, but not much. So you're going to pull some clay out right in that area. Okay. These two have a lot more toe stem, which is the little, oops, little piece before you get to the little end of the toe showing. And you're just going to sit here and peck around on it. That's what we do a lot. And voila. This sort of looks like the bottom of a foot with very little effort. To really make it sharp, take that little tool and go in there just a little bit more. Okay, and we're going to work our way around to the front of the foot. That is too cute. Okay, let's turn her over. Okay, what we have here is not a pretty sight. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna look at it from the side view and how I'm gonna have have her flat footed at this point. We'll get our pose later. Okay. Um, the way I have the drawing done, we're gonna move over to the drawing here. Okay. It's higher here, it flattens out here, and the toes angle off like so and the heel sticks out pretty far. And here's that little dip on the back side of the ankle. Here's the ankle bone. This is the outside ankle. If you'll notice, um, let's say on this drawing over here, 
and this is a really rough drawing, the one I give you, the final, I mean I just did this, um, the final I'm going to have really detailed information here. This inside ankle is higher than the outside ankle. See it's up just a little bit higher. Okay, and there is some space here, how it tapers and all this. We're going to come back to that too, but right now we're going to concentrate on the top of the foot, the toes. So what I want to do, the reason I did this was because I wanted to show you how much of a taper this comes down to almost nothing at the toes. So here we have a little doll that has too much in that area. The toes on the bottom are right, but she's got to have a ton cut off of the top. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to hold her without mangling her. I've got her, I got her roughed in at this point. She's not too ugly, but um, here's what I'll do. I take my knife, and since it's such soft clay, you've got to be real careful not to put too much pressure on it. I'm going to lose the detail on the bottom of the foot. Just pull some of it off. Looks pretty good. That's a better shape. All right, so now I go back to the bottom of the foot, hoping I haven't messed it up, and make sure that they're deep again so I can find that line all the way on the other side of the foot, the top. Get right down onto your finger. Doing it on the table is so much easier. I'm going to show you the hard way to do it <laughs> first. Okay. A little bit off of there. Okay. Smooth it out. You can see I've got a little bit of an ankle there. Not much. I'm going to accentuate it. Remember I said it's higher on the inside than it is on the outside. So it's pretty far up there. Far more than you think. And it's low on this side. I think I lost it all together. Anytime you get this kind of wiggly clay, it happens. So. Sometimes it's better just to let the clay sit for a little bit, about an hour. And that's what you have that hook for now on the top of her head. Hang her up somewhere from a chain from the ceiling like I told you before in another video. And let her get hard. And here we have a little black speck. Take them off as you see them, girls and boys. Okay. This bone comes straight down into it. Now that's not getting too bad. Thinner on the angles is always better. It's a little more feminine. Yep. Okay. Now, all that's left is to come back on the top of the surface, find that line, make sure it goes from the front of the toe up. Okay, to me, and I'm a perfectionist, or at least I try to be, um, I look like I've got maybe some toes a little fatter than others, so what you do to, to eliminate this problem is just cut straight down into it, pull it out. I thin that one up and spread them out there if you have to to start with. This is necessary. And this one, by the time it's all said and done, it's going to be too long, so whack it off. Make that angle on them. I know they look hideous at this point, but there's just a few strokes you can make that will change everything. I'm smoothing out now around the ends of the little balls up, push the little one over towards the others, and there's a dip right on the side, there's a bone, a little tiny one, where the little foot, little toe goes, so include that, okay, feather them out, round them up, okay, and then take, and this is going to mess up the back side just a smidge, but you can go back and fix it, do this smash down on the top of those and push that clay back towards the center. Now by doing that, that has made them look a little more realistic. See, if, can you get a good profile on that one? Okay. All right. And then take your miracle tool, which is not for sculpting at all, but it's for trying to pick up 
trying to paint for porcelain dolls and stick it in there and pull it forward and push the little toe back it rounds out the sides of it see where this is right now this is probably square put it in kind of lean over to that side just a little bit when I'm dragging it and it rounds it out and then just kind of squash them together squash them together and there you have a foot as far as the surface of the toenails all you do is you take a stylist this is a good one okay and you just take the the narrow end first and kind of map out where it's going to be don't push down too hard yet just map out where you might want the nail bed to be okay hardly anything on that last little toe there and then after all the toes are all rounded out and they're real pretty and this is going to take a little bit more than what I've done here just peck around on them tap down tap down just a little bit smash it back together take the bigger end of the stylist push back up on it a little bit just peck 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 and you'll have it eventually if you think you can get it in one stroke oh baby teach me <laughs> there's no way see the little point on this style this um, miracle tool just pull the sides down a little bit more on each one of them you don't want a real big nail bed um, so just take your time and that one is almost non-existent and that is too big of a toe when in doubt chop it there. Okay, that is a foot. That is a foot. I'm going to make a head now, and you'll learn this in the first video where you put the neck on the bottom to keep it from getting your fingers in it. Make a line. From side to side, make a line this direction. Okay, I want this to be a young girl, so all the features are going to be in the lower part. This is a forehead, so we don't need this anymore. And you're shooting for what would be a forehead and chin lineup. You want to make sure that they don't go out. If you if you fin chin's too far forward, it's going to look like a horse face that doesn't look feminine. Oh, I've seen some fairies, but you know, they looked okay, but it's not my style. Okay. Now, next thing to do is that little tiny oh, whoops, forgot something. Okay, the bottom part of the face is broken into three equal spaces. Whoops. Okay. This is the bottom of the nose. This is the bottom the bottom lip. And if you figure out what eye width you want or the nose wings that you want, this is basically the section from one side of the nose to the other, which probably won't quite come out that far. But there's an eye width between tear duct to tear duct, and they kind of line up with the sides of the nose wings. Or the nose wings, if it's ethnic, can go out a little bit further, but not by much. Okay, 
and then that same width is what you put on each side so you don't want to go out any further or any closer than that so you've got this is an eye right here and this is an eye right here there's your plan baby tiny little ball for the nose and this is probably too much clay the last video I polished my nails and this clay just eats your fingernail polish to pieces so I said oh what the hey this time okay little ball feather it in you're going to have an eye socket and in order to determine where the eye is going to be after you push in the eye socket you want to make dead center of it a pretty deep pupil right now and all you do is smash in your eye socket leaving the pupil so you can see where you're going my goodness that's ugly Okay. And you feather all this back into it. This is a real young face. Okay. And there's a dip on the sides of the nose. A little bit. Um, there's a line. Upper lip. Like so. You have a stylist. Make a ball on each side. And they should pretty much line up with where the tear duct or a little bit between the tear duct and the pupil are if you're centering. And this is going to be a little rosebud mouth. Okay. Tap that up just a smidge. Okay, put it in. Lift it up just a little tiny bit. Not much. Okay. And on the bottom below the lip. We're going to make that little chin ball muscle right there. Feather these up into the sides of the corners of the mouth. Take this up a little bit more. Put a little nose up there. This is a six inch doll. So I guarantee this looks big <laughs> compared to how she's going to end up. So I'm feathering everything out away from the nose. And I'm leaving that top lip just a little sticking out. You can see the little bit of the profile. It's not much at this point. But what's going to happen is we're going to pull the cheeks back so the top lip will look like it sticks out a little bit more then. Okay, here we go. Pull back just a little bit. I'll leave it kind of full. Not much. And have we got a top lip? Yes, we do. And the forehead still lines up with the chin, which is what I'm looking for. Now, this bridge of the nose sticks out too much, so tap it in. But leave that forehead where it was. Push in on the sides. You have still got pupils. You know where the eyes are going to be now. And every once in a while the nose takes a turn for the worse. Goes south, north, whatever. But keep rounding it out. Make a little ball on the end of it. Mm. Okay. Stylist. Gonna put in a pupil. Not a pupil, pardon me. Tear duct. Okay. Wow, she looks mean now. Okay. <laughs> and this little bridge on the nose. to with a small stylist and you got your line where you're on your hole where your little pupil goes so all you do is you want to make a line across the top of it we're just drawing a little line but don't make them too far apart remember what I said there's an eyes width in the middle eyes length go over to your pupil just a line that's all there is to it Okay, and you want to take and push in around the sides, um, just the sides. So we're making 
smashing in the whites of the eye, leaving the surface of it for the iris, and just come across here just a little tiny bit. There's very little to do here. And on this side, the way um, the eyelid is, it's heavier on the top from here to there. It tapers on both corners down to a point. Look at there. See? And then you want to tip that little point up like so. Take your tool, bring it up. I'm just going to do one side and then come back and uh, do the other off camera because there's very limited time with these tapes. I'm playing now. I get carried away. I go all different directions. But anyhow, so you can see how she's going to look. All right. Make that deeper. All the way down to nothing. If you were to look at the top of your head, you are eyes are not on a flat plane. They are angled on both sides of your head with the um, tear duct being far forward of the corner of the eye. So remember that. Make sure that you're on a, a, a curved line. Okay, there is a brow line and you don't want to make it very deep in young people. On men you're going to have a huge indentation right here that makes the brow line pr uh, protrude far more. Okay, and, and then this tips down right in here and the brow line connects to it. It goes back further like so. A little bit. Okay, let's put a little nose on her. Let's put tiny little nose holes. Like I said in my first video, the little nose wings are farther up on the head than this little divot in the center. This hangs down lower than the side of the nose wings. Okay, and to get a little nose wing, you have so little face. You don't need to add anything. Just pull it out that direction. And then for the top of the nose, there's a tiny little round line that comes across. I just barely touch it in there. Barely touch it. Okay. I think I say okay too much. I'll try not to do that. Okay. <laughs> First thing. A little nose. Let's tap it up. Make it cuter. We're going to fix that forehead. She kind of looks too bulbous, but that's okay. Feather that out. See, this this angle right here on that eye makes her look angry. If you just push it up just a little bit and feather it out, it took all the worry off her face. Now, for finishing touches on this, well, of course, you're going to peck around on this, smooth all of this out, but you want to put a little tiny rosebud mouth to be here and a little divot I'm not going to tell you what everybody calls this in the doll business oh, no way write to me and I'll tell you <laughs> it's too funny okay and then tip this up this needs to be a little deeper here the rest is just a matter of playing around with it. Every move that you make, as small as it is, is going to change it around drastically. It really does. Okay, turn her sideways. Let's figure out a nose. I mean, an ear. Okay, from the front of her face, which we want to keep, remember, I said the front of her forehead and her chin probably at a level, or the best you can, um, so she doesn't have a horse face. So we want to take the front of her face, which would probably be, let's say, her lip, top lip is going to be a little st sticking out more than the rest, um, and the back of her head, divide it in half, like that. Corner of her eye, go out that way. Corner of her mouth, go out that way. Okay, and we're going to make a, there's a 15 degree angle on it. It starts at this point here and goes up 15 degrees. You don't have to do this, but in my advanced classes, and we teach bigger dolls, it's necessary. The little ones, you don't have to deal with it. Besides, you're going to have pointed ears on it. You can do anything you want to with these. 
Okay, this is the shape of the ear. And actually, I have so much clay on her, I don't think I really need to add any. Um, so I'm going to press it around the ear and make an ear. Come up to this point right here. There's a little bit of a drop down, and then there's a straight shot over to her chin. And that's how you determine the um, underside of her jaw, just like that. And there's a lot of flesh removed from this area right here. And we're going to make her a little flatter right here. If you ever want to know about porcelain, I thought about doing a video on that, but there's things called undercuts. Believe me, you've picked the easier route to go. <laughs> porcelain is tough. Nobody has an appreciation for porcelain more than I do. Oh my God, we have been through so much. So glad I'm not doing it anymore. It's hard work making molds. And okay, um, since I've got this built up, all I do now is feather this down into it. Easy, easy. This is not hard once you've gone through it with this video um, about a hundred times. <laughs> We'll have these videos available for a long time, so if you want to wear one out, write me, I'll send you another one. Okay. Then, you have a hole right here, and a smaller one up there. And basically, all you're going to do is just connect the dots. Take it around like so. Different size stylus do different things. Here's one with crud on it, but we'll get it out like so. Go ahead and make that one deep. Let's just get an eardrum. Hmm. There's a little dip right here. That's where the little earlobe is, so you want to take flesh away from that area. And are you making a fairy or a mermaid? One would have pointed ears, one would not. Let's see. I'll do a one without pointed ears first. Okay, it's got a line like so. Not much to this. And you can ad lib, ad lib it if you want to, or you can look at a human ear and do it. Let's add a little clay for a pointed ear. And it's going to be in the back section. You leave that front part the way it is. Let's pull them out just a little bit. This is where I had, I wish I had smaller fingers. Oh, if I were oriental. They're so tiny. Been to the factories in China several times and the girls there are so tiny and they have these dainty little fingers. They can do the smallest stuff. Connect the dots. That's all you do. Whoops, 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 whoops. You can do anything you want to. We have them out further, like so. Or droopy. Not too droopy, just a little bit droopy, like so. Or you can have little tiny ones that are like that. So that is an ear. First thing you want to do is make sure that this is tightened up so you can get the head down over it and it won't be a problem because I had a big loop on the end and you don't need that much and if you'll notice where I have this is kind of on the back side of the the body see the, the front this is where the chest goes it needs to be a little bit on the back side so okay I just took it off the stick I had on had it on and I'm going to stick it right down on top of it hopefully the thing will come out in the right location. Eh, it's pretty good. Get a little sideways there. Stick it on there. Oh, she looks like an elf. We're making a fairy, so I guess it's okay. I'll make her more feminine later. But she's got a real sweet young face. It's the right look. Okay. You don't want the neck 
too big. So, or too, or too high. Um, the younger they are, the less neck they have. Ladies have swan necks. Babies have no neck. So somewhere in the middle is where she needs to be. How about that? Okay. Still a little long from the side. Interesting how you can do this. And feather it in. I think I'll have to push her down a little bit more, but let me get this worked in first. And I'll go back and finish off the other side of her face and work on her body a little more later. Okay, and I don't want to have too much um, space, like a gooseneck, you know. So I want to put a little more clay in this area right here because her neck sticks out a little far. But that's the look I want, except for filling in the area. A little bit more. Down, 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 down. It takes a little to change this face entirely. Just any little move to make her narrower. Little. The more narrow her face, the older she'll look. The fatter her face, the younger she looks. So you're going to put in this little divot here another little depression right here that is goes right up to the shoulder it's your collarbone a little space underneath of it bring this all back I like to drop the shoulders just a little bit so they look more natural I've seen some big ones on eBay and some other doll artists. They got the shoulders way up here and there's this big dip in here. A major no-no, girls and gentlemen. Okay, on the back side of the doll, we have a spinal column, obviously. So I just make a big, deep depression and then I feather into it. This is a beginner's tape. Later on, I will go into real detail and show you where all the shoulder blades and everything are. But we're just trying to get you girls to where you're comfortable working with the clay and making little fairies to start with. There's a dip here on this side, a little dip here on this side. It's just a tiny V. And it's not going to be that. Obviously, I'm over-exaggerating it. I'm going to tap it in, feather it back out that way. Okay. Feather, feather, feather everywhere. And I'm not going to get real fancy down there. But it is rounded like so. And then under here there's a little dip up. It's only half. It's not all the way over to the edge. It's half. And the heavier we are, the deeper this is. So we don't want to be a indicator real heavy doll. And round it up and then there's a little depression right here because uh, your little butt cheeks are not exactly totally round. Everybody thinks they are but they are not and they feather down into it. Okay, She has a distorted looking arm. I'll need to work on that for sure. Okay, back side of her leg, she has a place right here and a dip right here. I haven't done this leg at all yet, so I'm just doing one side of the body right now. Okay. And if you can see the back side of her leg, and when I said it's lower on this side and higher on this side. Looking pretty good. 
come back and retrieve some of your detail if you're losing it. All this can be feathered out and made real pretty by hanging her on a hook from the ceiling now and take your time and clean her up with little paint brushes, things like that. Finish this part right here. There's a little depression right underneath where the armpit goes right into the breast area. And you're going to have a tiny little nipple on the end. Add clay. Do not try to gather it up and have it work. This is easier. Just leave a little high spot in the center. All the way around it. Put a little bit of depth to it. Just a tiny little bit. And it's rough, but you have this side of the body completely finished. Well, maybe not the hand, but we'll get to that. I've raised one arm. I think this is sort of the pose I'm going to put her in with just the arm. The rest of it I have to, yet to decide. But So that means that we're going to have a little work under the armpit. It's got a hollowed out place. And this. And it works its way around to this side right here. Then um, I thinned up the waist a little bit, made a little more definition in the rib cage, gave it an actual elbow. Here's a little indentation we can make on this side of the elbow. Okay. And then on the back side, what I did was it, it goes up and feathers out that way. So there's a little bit of a low place right here. And since it's raised, it's, the little shoulder is going to come up higher and, and dip in a little bit more right there. Then it has a little shoulder blade, and it's essentially a, a V that goes towards the center. Uh, don't put a whole lot of definition in it because the stronger the bone shows through the surface, it looks like she's starving to death. An anorexic doll. I can see this now. Okay, here we do a little shoulder blade over here. They're similar, but because one's raised, it's a little bit different, but... We're going to do the skinny on it here. Okay, I hollowed out the top of her head. Um, before I actually fire it, it's easier so you don't put any strain on the doll's neck when you actually fire it, soft fire it, and then try to do it because you could snap her little neck and that would not be good. Okay, and all, all that's left up through here is just smooth, smooth, smooth. It's going to take a long time. Okay, um, the little bottom, I... Um, Cleaned it up a little bit here, put a little bit the dents back in. I added more, a little more meat to her bottom. She was just too skinny. So, and this is all a matter of preference on your part. So, um, it's kind of like a V here, but it's not real deep right through here. Okay, and then remember when I say it's like a half mark, half two from the inside to the outside, and stop right there, but just. This is just an indication of a line. It's not a hard line, unless she were heavy. Put a little more definition in the back side of the legs. They're starting to match better now. Um, and in the ankles, see how this bone goes out that direction and on both sides of them? It angles more, and the, the heel angles out towards the side, outside area. High on the inside of the ankle. See it's higher than the outside edge on both sides. Okay, And <clears throat> I'm just now starting to work on the feet. And I chopped the toes off of this one because I don't like them. And so to make a match. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stand her on my um, glass that I like to work on and um, detail them straight down. Uh, if I have to go back and fix the bottom of the feet, I will, but this is much easier to work this way. So um, this is what I advise for beginners and even for me because sometimes it is extremely hard to get it right and have them match up. Okay, look at the knees. What I've done here is I've, well there's a lump right there, forget that lump, but there's a little uh, indentation across the top of the kneecap on both sides and the way it is the knee is round here 
round here. It dents in a little bit right here on both sides and dents in some on this side and this side. And then this becomes part of the bone that goes down this way. That becomes this becomes the bone that goes down that way. That's that bone that's close to the surface. And um, looks really pretty when you do it that way. And it, in the advanced uh, videos and advanced classes that I teach, um, there's all kinds of little nuances that, that go into the knee, but we're not going to deal with those right now. It's just going to be too much information to try to digest, but they are in there. See how much more realistic that looks? Okay, and I put a little navel in her, and her navel might be a smidge high. She's kind of, look at her face. I worked on her face and I made her um, a little chubby. She's got a real young look to her face. And wide-eyed, but they're kind of sleepy eyes, even though they're huge. And a little pouty mouth. And what I want to do is finish out as much detailing on the face as possible, so there's no scraping to do ever on that, because once you start scraping on an area, you, you run the risk of um, pricking it with a knife and then gouging out too deep and then you'll never be able to repair it. Okay, and a little divot here. But I really like that underarm. That is such a pretty little thing. Uh, well, it is to me anyhow. Some people might not think that. <laughs> like all these little nuances of the body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the feet, finish the toes, and then I'm going to um, start posing her and we will finish the hands after she's in the correct pose. I have to detail her toes and I have to do her hands. I have to put another ear on her. But uh, this is basically it. And we still have the little um, thing in the top of the head so we can hang her in the oven from this. I have not made a, um, a carved out place in the back for the wings to go but that will come later and I'll just carve out a little circle down as deep as I dare go and then you'll be able to insert the wing wire down inside of it and glue it on the interior at some point when she's all finished. But what I want to do is they have a, she has a bin line right across here. This is real important if you're going to seat the doll so you know where it is. She's pretty much finished except for the detailing. So this is, this is the how far I take it before I actually um, start the pose. So you want to bend her real slow. If you do it in slow little increments, she won't break because I just started sculpting her today so she's still kind of soft. If you let her sit around for a couple of days she would have more of a chance of having a break. So nothing's breaking at this point. Okay. And if you were going to have her standing, remember there is a weight bearing leg always to make it a natural pose and then there's a, a leg that would be not have so much weight on it and you could like point the toe or something else but I've chosen to have her seated so we're going to go back and we're going to look at all the little places where you bend her and take our time bending her because I don't want to mess her up too much yes I'm going to have to go back and um, clean her up and do the little paintbrush thing where I feather it all out but I'm just taking my time bending her try not to move anything too fast because it changes too much. Keep it, put it back in order just as I'm doing it. Okay. It's always better to do this way because if you're trying to clean up and detail all these little areas before you do your pose, um, or uh, do the pose first rather. Do the pose and then try to clean them all up. It just never, it's so much harder to get in these little places. Do her while she is just flat 
stick figure. And when you photograph her, you can get a really good shot coming in at this angle. And make sure that her eyes meet his eyes. Has to have some kind of contact there. So now, of course, the hands will be more detailed. And um, there. That's so sweet. I'd buy that doll. Now I'm going to take her off. Move the ducky. Take her off. Okay. And all I do is I take the hand off. It's actually going to be put on the surface of the table. And I'm going to detail it then. And right now I'm just going to make it pencil thin. That's good enough. Now all the clay, hand will go back on there in the pose that you want, and all the clay will be tapered down into it. If you have the palms up, and the fingers towards you, it's easier to do it because you can pull away. It's harder to pull this direction against um, the angle that you are not going. So I'm going to trim the little finger. And we did this before in the last video, but and nothing's really changed. It's a labor of, okay, I'll call it love, but it's tedious, needless to say. And don't let your scraps build up on your tool, which I did, or um, on the um, board around you because they just, they're just really nasty. Just keep it clean. Okay, pick them up. Okay, I'm going to move this one out of the way. We're, I have them to where we're trying to match them at the same time, so it's good to do two hands at the exact same time. See, I got a little too much there. I'm going to have to trim. A little too much there. They were kind of thick. If you start thick and then cut off, it's good. But if you start thin and try to add, it's next to impossible. Because they wiggle all over the place. Try not to do too much cutting out in between because that just makes it ugly. It's hard to maneuver. But okay, flatten it a little bit more. And I'm still seeing that I still have too much, so I trim from the sides. Okay. And if you to take your tool like this, and whoopsie. I'm gonna go back and round those fingers off later. We're just trying to get the right thickness first. And it is difficult. Especially if you want some space between them. Yeah, I don't know which hand I'm doing here. Yeah, that's her left hand. Oops. Okay. Now, we're going to put um, the palm of the hand in. Remember what I said in the last video? There's a big uh, pad of flesh here, and one that's across here, and one that's across here. This one across here is real small. It's not big at all. So you just want to indicate a little pad by taking a dip in here. And this is where the wrist is going to go. And obviously our thumb is too big in comparison to the other fingers. So we're going to thin it up. And how you do that is just pull on it. Just keep pulling. And sometimes you have to pick it up to do it. I think I just lost my first finger. <laughs> I'm not, I'm telling you girls, this is the hardest part of any doll. 
the hardest part if you want it accurate. Take your time. There's nothing worse than huge hands on a doll. Yeah, I'm going to have to add a little more on the um, first finger. And I've got too much on the thumb. So let's just pull from one and give to the other one. You'll learn how to add. Maybe you won't. <laughs> Good thing I'm patient, huh? Mama. Stitch it in there. Wow. Sometimes it goes easier, but always when you're under pressure or behind the camera and having a hot flash all at the same time, this is how it works. <laughs> yeah, those hot flashes are wonderful. Okay, well, we're getting there. Okay, some more on the thumb. Remember what I said, the proportion one, and we will have a, a video totally dedicated to fingers and toes, hands and feet at some point, but um, so I can give you every piece of information there is to know about it. And we'll work a little larger so you can see what you're um, actually doing, but we're making a small fairy now. So, so basically when you turn the thumb down to the side, and if you look at your own thumb in relationship to the palm of your hand, you're going to see that the top of your thumb doesn't come very far up compared to the rest of the fingers. So check for little things like that when you're doing it and just lop it off. That's where the thumb comes to. Okay, and we're going to tip it up. We're not going to put a lot of detail in this right now. Let's check out the other side and make sure it's looking like something. Okay. And it's good to go alternate back and forth from the top to the um, bottom of the palm. And you're just wiggling them around. And there's a little line that goes this direction and one that goes this direction. Alright, we're real close to having the hand pretty much done just enough to uh, size it on her face and then the rest is up to you girls and guys to putz around with it until you get it the way you want it. I just got it the size that I need and I'm going to try it on the doll. Remove the duck. Okay, here we go. And that is it. You can detail a little bit more before you actually put it on the doll, but I'm just showing you for time's sake, the process. Okay, and we're um, putting a little clay in to build up the wrist, which remember I took it off when I thinned it out. Okay, let's say you have your little pose in your maybe your little finger up or whatever you want to do, but um, and there's a little bit of clay missing there. You want to get everything in there. We'll smooth it out later. But when she sits with the duck, it's kind of like this. She's going to be having her hand come down on top of his head, like she's petting him. So take all that into consideration. And don't, don't make it so tight with the hands that you can't get the little duck body in there. Remember, you've got to keep it open so you can get it in without breaking the little hands off. So that's a consideration. Okay. I'll have to smooth this out and detail a little bit more, but that's basically how you do it. And there's going to be another one over here across the front of this little face, which is holding. This is Genesis Paints. Um, you need to get the glazing medium that thins the paint, and um, it's just it's specifically developed for polymer clay, and it is so much nicer than acrylics. Try it.
Okay, what I do for painting, I mix a little bit of pink, and the colors are on my website, and um, I use a little bit of taupe, which is actually a flesh color by Genesis. All the paints are gen by Genesis, by the way. Flesh 07 is the color I call taupe. And if you mix the pink, here's in the tray down here, if you mix the pink and the taupe together, you get what is the perfect body shader, shading color. And I use it under the breasts and the navel. Um, anywhere you have a skin fold or a, um, like here, get the hair off this, okay, like so. And here's what I do. I put it in there, I don't put it real thick, and immediately I take a dry brush, this is what's called dry brush painting, and feather it. So it doesn't have just a big build up and it's feathered out into the areas that have no paint. And it looks more realistic as um, a body fold. Okay, and let's see, I put it in the ears. Uh, it's the same color that I use on the cheek. And I'm going to paint an eye, and here's what I do. I put a little bit of it above the eye, and a little bit, just, just a teeny bit below the eye, not much. And then I feather it all in. Then I take um, a light brown to a medium shade brown, and this piece of hair, I don't know where it all comes from, it must be those little Pomeranians. Okay, and I put a little bit over top of the upper lid. And don't make it too dark, just a little bit of a line. I do these first because everything has to be shaded in so it looks natural. I do your shading first, and then I take, um, I use really dark colors, most of the time it's black, sometimes it's a real dark, dark green, or a dark, dark blue, and I paint the iris, oh, the pupil, pardon me, I always get those two mixed up, how simple is that, okay, paint that first, then she's going to have sort of a greenish color eye, and just a tiny little bit of paint. This takes so little. I mean, look at how little the eye is. I mean, here's my thumb. Whoops, that's not a pretty good picture of my thumb. <laughs> but, um, and basically, her face is about the same size as my nail bed. Not even my top. I guess it's about half the size of my thumb if you were to measure from the top to here. But it's a tiny little face. And so you need very little color. And I don't paint the whites of the eyes because there's nowhere really to put it. And it's hard to make it natural if you actually put white or even tan in there. Um, and if you want little accents on the green or whatever shade you use for an iris, you just put a tiny little bit on a brush, a, hair, a brush with one hair in it maybe, and dab it on there for little tiny accents. Like the light is um, caught in her eye, and when you photograph her, it comes out really sweet. Okay, and then we have eyeliner, just like me. And I put it all the way out to the corners. Yeah, ma, all right, okay. All the way out to the corners. It's kind of a fairy thing. It gives you a young look. Um, I learned that early in the 60s when I was in high school. Man, that tells you how old I am. Okay, um, get it underneath the lid, and all the way down to where the tear duct is. Sometimes you have to do it in several applications because it takes a while to get it on there. And this, I only got a few hairs in this brush anyhow. It's hard to get it just right. Like I said, corners of her eyes turn up and then I put a few little wispies down at the bottom and separate them barely see them but if you have a really good camera and you take close-ups of them 
you would be surprised. They really show up. And when you're, if let's say you're doing an eBay auction, and you're putting this stuff on there, they want to see as much detail as possible. So this is a necessary part. And I'm going to do, she's kind of got a sweet but sad face. So, and the reason is because she's um, hugging the little duck. And so we want to give her a little something extra with her eyebrows, like um, make a statement with them, like, oh, you poor little ducky, kind of thing. So that means it will be higher here instead of just straight across. She's got more expression on her face. And in my advanced classes, I teach all kinds of ways to paint expression on face. We teach things like how to make teeth, and um, mm, ethnic dolls, everything. And once again, everything's feathered in. Whoops, it's a little bitty glob there. It's too dark right in that one area. Feather it in. Soften it. This is a real sign of um, an amateur if you've got some hard lines and these are hard lines if you put if you don't feather everything okay I'll go back and play with that a little bit more off camera but because I'm a perfectionist and um, I put that same pink uh, on her nose in her little nose holes and I put a little bit darker pink generally with a little little orange or coral mixed in with it mixed with that pink and taupe together and put in the center line across her mouth so that it looks deeper and then on the upper lid upper lip and maybe a little bit underneath to give it a little depth but pink right on the mouth itself and you can use a little of the same um, coral color um, for tear ducts, but not with this brush, obviously. And um, let's see, that's, let's see, let's go back to our pink taupe. And here's a few other little places you want to put it. Um, there's, a, you know, the bone that comes straight down here. You want to put a little bit of a line right there and rub it in. The other things out. Some of the artists... Um, that work in polymer don't use paint except for the painted features on the face They actually just use blush now. I don't think that's real permanent Especially if your customer or the or the end client is is going to handle the piece a lot You're going to lose that blush and before you know it. They're going to say that doesn't look like when I bought it So Might have a little too dark there And we have a couple of moonies. There are some flesh tones that um, Genesis makes um, that will cover over a few of those little moonies. Um, you can see a little moonie right on the top of her leg right there. And I think you can see one there. And you can see one there. It's wherever I added clay, it generally shows up. If you start with a lot of clay on your armature to begin with, and you carve down into it, you won't have as much of a problem with it. And I gotta get her other little cheek, just little circular motions. And that's a lot of clay on that face. She's gonna look like a china doll pretty soon. I'm gonna lot of pink on that face. Okay. You want her cute, but you don't want her painted too much. Now I gotta go back and make the other side match. Hmm. And I always, especially if it's a child, I put a little bit of a blush on the top of her nose. Right there. And a um, little bit on the forehead. Very little. And I always like to outline the top right up here in case you um, your hairline goes up into it. It looks more natural for some reason. Just a little definition. Okay. 
Okay, all that's left is um, between her toes. I did her fingers somewhat. I did a little in between the fingers, like so. And then I tipped the fingertips with just a little pink on the back side. I did a little on the palm of the hand. I did it on the bottom of the foot. There's some, see right there? Put it on there, just where you would walk and your foot would hit the floor more, be a little redder looking. The bottoms of the toes, in the depth part of the toes. And on the surface of the toes, you're gonna be putting it right down between the toes. Don't put it all over the place because you don't want it to look like she's on the fire or bleeding, but yeah, I'm gonna take a clean up here. Feather it in. You can put a little on the top of the foot, but I wouldn't put much. But things like around the ankles, you're gonna put it there, you're gonna put it behind the knees. Uh, in between the little bottom here and the back, and look, there's a Mooney right there. It's a big Mooney. I will fix it though. It generally, um, that's why I like to mix a lighter color with um, any clay, even Pro Sculpt, because the Moonies don't show up. Besides, most fairies aren't going to be real suntan. They're real ethereal looking. Okay, I think we're, and we've got the little um, nipples to do, and we are done painting this doll. This is Tibetan lamb's wool, and we dyed it with uh, L'Oreal. It's very expensive or any other kind of hair coloring. I found out later, after we had already done this, that you can actually use RIT dye. The only color I wouldn't recommend uh, using is cocoa because it turns the, dye, it turns the hair purple. So I use Fabri-Tac glue, and it's the best, and I actually pretty much glue most of the hair down with it. So all you have to do is cut off the hide. Do not use the hide because these are tiny little fairies and their heads are too small for that. I just cut right next to the surface of the hide. Okay. And you want, whoa, hairs everywhere. <clears throat> I don't want a real long hairdo on this particular doll on the top maybe in the back, so I'll put it in two different applications. I'll cut it off short here so that they're all level. Then I just put glue inside. Well, here it comes. And just do this. And when it starts to dry, squeeze it all together. And you're gonna end up putting that down the center of the whole of the doll's head. So we make a few of these in advance. This this is being the main one, and then I'll have a, a tinier one with longer um, strings where I didn't cut off the top, and that'll go on the back side of her head for the length. And um, she's looking pretty wild right now, but um, we will have her done in a little while so you can see the rest of it in her pose. And that's all for this section. I get a lot of questions on how to make wings, so I'm going to show you a few samples that I prefer. First one is um, any gauge wire, and I've used probably a 24 or 26 gauge wire here, and cellophane. Uh, any color is going to be pretty, whatever suits your doll. First thing you do is make a shape, it's all one piece, and twist the ends and leave a little extra at the ends. We'll cut them off later if we don't need them. Make it really neat. Firm, shape it up pretty. And what we're going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of Fabri-Tac glue. This is the glue I prefer for almost every operation I use. And I'm going to put a little bit at the very top end of the wing and the very bottom end of the wing just to secure it to the cellophane to start with. And we're putting it down on the cellophane. 
and this glue really sticks to your fingers. So try to keep your fingers out of it as much as possible. You know, s scoot it around with just your fingernails. A uh, bigger pair of scissors would have been good for this operation, but hey, this is what was handy. And trim it off. Okay. Next thing is take Fabri-Tac glue, all-purpose wonderful glue, and go right around a nice even bead all around the outside edges of the wire. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the wire into the glue. Just to tap it into it just a little bit. Okay, and let it dry flat. And this glue just takes minutes to dry, you'll see. We'll be cooking it with my embossing gun shortly. And this is an embossing gun you can get in a stamp section of, or scrapbooking section of any craft shop that you come to. And you want to keep it far enough away so you don't burn your fingers. And be very careful about how it goes on, how it um, cooks. Because you don't want to burn a hole in it. You just keep it nice and even. And what it does is it seals right down to the wire and tightens it up. So I've lost the texture that the, that the cellophane had in it, but I didn't want it anyhow. So I just wanted the color. So and then you trim around. Pick the glue off, of course. And trim all the way around it. Okay. And so you can see right through it. If you want different segments, <clears throat> You can add more wire. And uh, what I do next is take the Fimo decorating gel and um, a brush that I never really clean out. I put a little bit in a uh, Dixie cup because you're going to have to throw this away afterwards and spread it evenly, best you can, on both sides of the cellophane. And then you're going to bake this in a home oven, believe it or not. It won't. <laughs> it won't disintegrate on you after this stuff seals it. It's a plastic coating that really is wonderful. Oh, I use it on everything. And so once it's got coated on both sides, you want to trim it all off. And you bake this in your home oven. Let's say you had a whole bunch of them. Um, do them all in the oven at one time. But gosh, don't breathe this stuff. It stinks to high heavens. I don't think I would put it in a toaster oven. It would be too small. But um, bake it at 265 for approximately 15 to 20 minutes. And then it's sealed indefinitely. And there you have a wing. It's just that simple. Okay, the next one we're going to do, this is a mermaid tail. And I've made it out of something called Quick Mix. And... Um, or is it Mix Quick? Pardon me. Yes, it is Mix Quick. It's made by the Fimo Company, and um, it has a lot of little tiny air bubbles in it. No matter what you do, um, it's going to have them in it. It's, it's, a, it's a thinner that you mix into your Fimo to um, make it soft again. But I use it for the actual tail on this. I rolled it out. Um, and I'll show you next. Um, I'm going to do mermaid section in this film too. So I'll show you how I made this tail. And it's got wire in it. It's got little segments. And uh, this is other, another kind of clay. Um, same company, but it's translucent clay. You won't get as many air bubbles in it, but I wanted it um, for the effect on the other one. It comes in two different colors, a white and a translucent off-white. Anything you find, you can make wings out of here are a pair of leaves I found out in my yard off of an orchid tree. And uh, I coat it first with matte or gloss um, varnish, both sides. And then um, after they're dry, you know, I can do a couple, couple applications on each side. I use the Fimo decorating gel on both sides again. And then to get some stability, the wings, I actually uh, glue on a little edge of wire just so I have something to connect it to. And you want to use Fabri-Tac to glue the wire on. And you can put this in the oven and cook the stuff, the Fimo decorating gel, and it'll, you won't burn the leaves up. Okay, here's a <clears throat> cicada wings. 
And this is how they're all joined together, and this is how I make most of my uh, fairy wings. They look like real ones. I really prefer this the most. And it's got coloring on it and everything else. So um, I'm going to show you how I make it. You take a raw cicada wing like this. You coat it with matte varnish, two coats on each side. And then we're going to put wire on it. And this is 24 to 26, even 28 gauge if you want a, a smaller, daintier wing. Let's say you're doing it on butterfly wings. Um, any gauge wire you want to use, but the daintier, the more realistic it looks. So I just coat the top edge with the um, Fabri-Tac. A nice, even bead. Good luck with that, folks. <laughs> it's tricky. This glue has a mind of its own. Keep fresh glue around all the time. It, it, it clunks up pretty fast, and so... There we go. We're getting it. Try to keep your fingers out of it. <clears throat> and just, just before it starts drying really well on the ends, just move it up. Every time you stick your fingers in it, you have a little glump to do... Uh, glob to deal with afterwards. So get the wire right down to the surface of the top of the wing. Here we go. It's on me. I'm doomed. Glue everywhere. <laughs> okay, that's one wing. Let's do another one now. Oh, that's the upper wing. I'm going to do the lower one now. <clears throat> Once again, I've got the wire. Straighten it out real nice and smooth now. Just like you pull on a ribbon, you pull on the wire to straighten it out. Top edge gets the glue. Hold the base of the wire and hold the wire towards the end of the base. <clears throat> See how fast it dries? Keep your fingers out of it, if possible. And we're going to apply Fimo Decorating Gel afterwards to both sides of this. What I do is I twist, twist them together and I hang them on a coat hanger after they've got the gel on them and cook them in my oven. I'll hang it on a coat hanger. That way they don't touch. And they're cooked at 265 for approximately 15 to 20 minutes. And don't breathe it. Aren't they pretty? Love them. Be sure to coat it with the varnish first. Remember what I said. Then you're going to put the wire on it. Then you cook it with the Fimo Decorating Gel. Okay. And now here's a pair that's already totally together. And I've spaced them out a little bit so that you can pose them. See, just a little bit. And I'll twist it all of them together in a big long line. I'm going to trim it off because that's going to be too much wire. We're going to put this down the back of the doll's body between her shoulder blades. And you want to twist it into a, a little bit of ball, a little bitty ball, so that, and <clears throat> you can go either way. It depends on how you want to um, have your wings posed. See, the wings have a curve to them, so if you want them turn the other direction, you put the ball on the other side. Either way. I don't really have a preference. It all depends on the doll. And these have a little bit of a pearlized um, powder on them to get that effect. And when your doll is in the rough stage, obviously she is, she has no arms and legs, you want to cut a hole in the back of her body. It's much easier to do it now than it is after the doll is completely finished. I mean, it's possible to do it after the doll is completely finished, but much easier now. Just pop it right out of there. You can get as deep as you want. Okay, and after that's done, the doll is fired. You want to put a Fabri-Tac glue in a hole, once again, good old glue, and you just put that little ball right down in the very center of the doll's back and let, it, let her dry flat like this. Of course, remember, she's fired now, okay? And you can 
turn it around like I said you can put the little ball on the other side if you want the wings go in another direction and we'll put her put them back in again and that is what your fairy's going to look like I'd like to show you how to do a little mermaid so that as a beginner's tape this has everything you need on it to do a mermaid or a fairy Okay, this is the mermaid that we're going to make, and I'm going to attach a tail to it. This is her interior armature, and it is basically like the same armature that you do for the fairy, with the exception of one little thing at the bottom. I think you can see it, but what I've done is where the feet stop, <clears throat> I made wire that was a little extra long, and I turned, twisted it towards the to, at, at the bottom to combine it, and then made a little fish hook. So that is all you have to do. So if you um, make armatures, just make them an extra um, inch or so longer so that you can accommodate this hook. All right. And so um, I'll show you how to do it. And um, what we're going to do is use 22 gauge for the um, main body of the armature. Okay, it's nice and crooked. Cut it off, and it's just like the other one. We're going to twist a loop at the top. You could put a little vise, um, little <clears throat> clamp a gizmo on the corner of your art desk, and um, put this thing in it to make it easier to twist if you're like weak or have arthritis or anything like that. Makes it much better. Okay, get down to a certain point, then I cut the 24 gauge wire for the arms. And I don't measure much anymore, but like if you have a press mold, um, one thing that you'd want to do is hold the wire up to the press mold while you're making the armature because it just makes it so much easier. Now, for all you purists who don't use press molds, um, you don't need to do that. You just have to have a pattern. But here's a press mold, okay? And so what you can do is make sure it goes to the top, out the top of her head. And this is the heart area right here. And make sure you have plenty past the bottom of the fin. This is a Little Mermaid mold that I made. It's called Pearl. And uh, so I'm going to twist the <clears throat> heart area down a bit and actually twist it down to and I've said it before but I'm saying it again about where the navel would be it's a little bit past it we'll go doesn't matter it's, it's in the ballpark this is not an exact science but and all you do is twist at the bottom based on <clears throat> how long you want your doll <clears throat> the, um, the little hook should be right right in this area just past where her um, ankles would be this would be the ankle area but it would be in where the feet would be if you were going to um, make something similar that would be the size of a fairy armature okay so I'm going to cut it off just a smidge it's a little tad long and twist like so and voila whoops well you know about the top part <laughs> there you go that's how simple it is doesn't take very long at all okay now we've got several of them <clears throat> this one's a little bit bigger but this is a different size mermaid so enough for that step next one is going to be how to attach the fin, or the tail fin actually, which um, I made this in an earlier um, uh, mention in the wing section, but um, I'll just go over it a little bit briefly. I used uh, Quick Mix by Fimo, and it makes a lot of little air bubbles in it. Even though you roll it out flat, I roll it with a rolling pin um, or an acrylic 
um, polymer roller, which is basically a, just a clear tube. And you can buy them in any craft store and just roll it out really flat. And you might want to roll it on a piece of wax paper or something that you can peel off, a piece of saran wrap or something. So wax paper would be better because it um, stays flatter. And then you can just peel it off. But what you do is you make your little armature of wires first. There are wires inside of this. I've got one wire on the outside, right here, and one right here, and one right here, so that I can pose this. Look, it's posable somewhat. Okay. Um, and then put the wire down, embed the clay over the top of it, then flip it over and make sure it's totally encased in this. And you can trim right up to the edge of the wire with um, your knife. Um, and so see if you can see it right on the edge right there. So, um, and then you hang it in the oven, just like this, pose it the way you want it, hang it in the oven with a little loop sticking out of the top. Uh, and this was uh, probably about 26, 20, yeah, 28 gauge wire that I used, and it's colored so that um, it won't show through the fin. And um, what I do is I paint the ends of it after. I fire this first before I even put it on the mermaid. You don't have to. You um, can do it just by um, having it in the raw clay, but talk about manhandling. We're going to be putting this loop on top of a loop, all right? and closing it down. So I find it best to go ahead and fire the fin first, all right? Because it's just easier to handle. And then I also want to close this loop too as tightly as I can, okay? So there's some play in it, but we're going to close it in with clay. And um, if you're worried about this burning in your oven after the fact, after you've um, already fired it, and then you go to fire your mermaid and everything as a multiple firings, um, what you can do is go ahead and put some Fimo decorating gel on it. Before you even fire this the first time, since this is already fired, the Fimo decorating gel will protect it. It won't let it burn. Okay, and then we're going to put this on the top of it. And there's a a lot of different ways you can do this to make it look attractive. I just stick it in there. You can make this shorter if you'd like. It doesn't have to be the same length as mine. You can make any shape you want to on the fin. And uh, in the wings section, that was just prior to this chapter uh, in this um, DVD, we show how to make those clear cellophane ones. Well, you can make um, clear cellophane with Fimo decorating gel coating, um, fins and or tail fin for this mermaid as well. So you've got lots of options. You're only limited, uh, only limited by your own imagination. So let it flow, folks. Okay, sometimes I actually make um, a line that goes all the way back like a ridge, all the way down the back of the doll. There's so many ways to do this. And, or I'll take this a little further down and make it look like a fin. And sometimes I'll stick another fin in there and it sticks out this way. Or I'll have side fins sticking out the doll. And I always attach the side fins afterwards. It's really easy. All you have to do is just carve in a hole on the side of the doll as deep as you want to go with this. And let's say you have a little um, wing fin. You can even use cicada wings for this operation. As long as it has a long wire that you can poke down in there, angle down in there, and it's like a double wire, and it's going to stick out the side, it's just too easy. And then you pack in clay right around where you put the new fin. And this can be done after the doll is fired, the final time even. You pack in clay around that fin so it looks natural. Okay, well, we won't mess with that right now. But okay, lots of ways to do this. Then you can bend her, flip her around. You can fire her in this position if you put her on, let's say, polyfill in a glass bowl. Of course, this is nasty right here, you know, you don't want to make it like that. You want to finish it off pretty. Or you could have her twisted. There's a lot of ways. And um, as long as she's got some support in the oven, if you hang her, whatever, put um, a shelf underneath. 
and perhaps um, some kind of uh, glass or something where she sits on top. This part sits on top of it so it's supported so it doesn't put any strain on the body. Okay, now I want to show you one more thing on this so that you know how to do a mermaid. There are two different mermaid tools and you can make these or if you are, if you're handy or uh, get someone to make them for you. They are just brass rods. Of course it's going to make your clay dirty if you're working with this brass early on, but if you're pretty much done with the doll and you are ready to um, make your scales, these are what these are all about. You just can take any um, um, wooden tool, take the tool out of it and just put a brass rod in it and angle it, you know, um, file it down to where it's, um, it's a hollow brass rod by the way, file it down to probably it's a 90 degree angle, both of them are, and you've got mermaid scale making tools. I sell them too, they're $10 a piece, but because we have to hand make them and we do a lot to them, but um, let me show you how it works. You simply put it in, lift it up, and move on. Now, you want to try for uniformity. It's just like laying bricks. I'm sure a lot of you women have already done that, laid bricks. <laughs> well, I have. Anyhow, but you want to stagger them. And you can space them out. You can space them out further. Let's say you want to do something like this. Doesn't matter. That's a quicker way to do it. Um, it, it does take a while. It's really tricky to do. Um, oftentimes, because she's all wiggly and everything, what I'll do is I'll um, finish the top of the doll and have the armature hanging down. I will fire the top of the doll. And I will, um, before I fire it, I put a little bit of clay on the interior on the wire just so it stabilizes the wire. And I fire it hard. It's like a skeleton on the interior, interior of the doll. And then you can add the clay and the fin, and it doesn't wiggle around like this. It's real stable. So uh, the Little Mermaid tool uh, all depends on the size of scale that you want. If you want little bitty scales, here's one way to get it. It takes a while. You have to be very patient and try to be orderly and neat so that it looks like actual scales as opposed to, you know, haphazardly all over the place. And if you want some different effects, you can actually take the, the, the scale tool and turn it the other direction towards fat, flat. See, I'm, right now the way I'm making it, I'm, I'm putting it in with the angle, the hole going up. Now I've got the hole going down and I'm going to put some little extra doodads, just lightly, like you tap it in. You can put teeny little bits, itty bitty bitty ones, and space them out. And then work your way down into the bigger pieces. Like so. It's a little on the sloppy side, but you get the drift. And you can see that it does take a long time to do it, and you can work your way all the way down into the bigger ones. So, and to make them look like they are a natural um, progression of sizes, you can put a couple of bigger ones here and there, incorporate them with the little ones, so that the transition from real tiny to big is not so severe. Okay, anyhow, I would think, and then just before you fire it, I lightly tap them down, because um, it, a lot of times if you <clears throat> pull up on one, it's going to leave it like, I don't know if you can see it sideways or whatever, but it's got too much of a um, ledge that can be, you know, sheared off quite by accident. Just handling it will, will break it off and then you'll have a little gouge there. You don't want that. So you want to tap it down lightly so you don't have problems later. Okay. And that's all for our little mermaid. Thank you. This is the finished doll. 
Uh, I don't do the wings like this any longer, but it's a nice effect. I used translucent liquid Sculpey with wire, and I fired it in between two pieces of glass to get this effect, and used pearlized powder for the pink glow to her. Sweet, isn't it? I'd like to thank you for viewing this film. I hope you've learned what you came for, and I will continue to make films for a number of years yet. So please get the entire collection, and happy sculpting.